excited to be here in Newcastle at Thought Fox Media Group here with Michael. And he's going to tell us a little bit about what they do here. And then we're going to do a bit of a studio tour and check out how they use vMix as a part of their business. So feel free to let us know exactly how you use vMix. Thanks, Tim. Well, ThoughtFox started in 2016, um, but uh, it really grew out of volunteering for the Newcastle ice hockey team, the Newcastle North Stars. Always had a, uh, a love of media and TV and uh, joined their, their volunteer team in, uh, in 2012 um, and grew with their, their production and took over some of their, their live streaming responsibilities and brought in new gear. And then out of that, I'm like, well, I can actually earn a living doing this stuff so Thought Fox Media Group was was born out of that and uh, here we are today. Cool. What sort of productions do you guys normally do? So we do primarily a lot of sport uh, so we've done obviously ice hockey, uh, figure skating, speed skating, soccer, baseball. There's a lot of sports out there that uh, aren't quite as common as, as your mainstream so that's yep. why those leagues or teams are, are looking for other providers who can give them a high quality live stream production but without the budget of TV yeah. <laughs> essentially. We do offer multicam, instant replay, on-screen graphics, um, all of that sort of thing. Okay, nice. So uh, you mainly said that you work with the Australian Ice Hockey League, is that right? Yeah, so throughout the winter we work with the Australian Ice Hockey League. Uh, this year is our biggest season uh, working with them as they've started their own pay-per-view service, AIHL TV. Okay. Uh, so we've taken on the production services for five of the ten teams in the league. Oh, that's cool. So you actually do quite a number of them remotely um, as well as doing the one on-premises here in Newcastle. That's right. So Brisbane actually, we've provided them with cameras and encoder boxes for the seasons. They've provided their own camera operators uh, but for Newcastle we produce on-site and then in Erina and Sydney we send our camera operators and gear down to those locations and uh, they send their feeds back to us and we produce everything in our studio here. I appreciate your time no uh, problem. and so we're gonna go and check out how they do it remotely now Let's get to it. Let's do it. Today, we're going to show you our remote production workflow for the ice hockey game that we're producing. Uh, we send camera operators out into the field with cameras and Magewell SDI to SRT encoders. Uh, we receive their feedback in our studio and add graphics and replays uh, and do commentary even uh, from our studio location. Uh, so let's get going and show you how it all works. All right, so here we have some of our uh, remote production kit that we send out with our camera operators. So we have a headset for comms, we have our Sony EX3 camera, and we have our Magewell encoder box, uh, and this is the HDMI version, so we've got a Blackmagic SDI to HDMI converter uh, linked in with that as well. And then for our commentary, two Audio-Technica uh, BPHS-1 headsets, as well as a press button cough channel router switch. And then to pull the audio into our remote production, we have a Behringer UMC404 HD audio interface, uh, along with a Microsoft Surface Laptop 3 uh, that's running a version of vMix basic HD uh, to connect to our studio via vMix call. So that's if someone's doing the remote production commentary like on that site. On that site, that's correct, yeah. So now we're going to take a look at doing it here in the actual studio. Yep. So in here we have where our commentators will talk to what's happening in our remote games. Uh, so they'll have the game being played back on the TV uh, in front of them. So we're using an Apple TV with the Sienna Monitor app to pull in an NDI feed from our production machine. Uh, so the commentators that way can see the score bugs so they know uh, what's happening on there. They can also see uh, the replays going out to the viewers to make sure they can accurately depict, uh, describe what's going on there as well. Uh, so we've got our own in-house commentary box that we've made uh, that allows the commentators to hear direction from the producer as well as any audio cues we're sending them as well. Uh, but they can also utilize a talkback button to uh, speak back to the director without going to air uh, if they need any further information. They also have a kill switch uh, for complete control of when their mic's on and off. 
uh, as well as a cough button uh, for when they need to mute themselves. And they have control over their side tone, so how much they hear themselves, as well as the overall volume of what's going in their ears. And then we have a laptop for them to see live scoring uh, so that they can look up uh, who the goal scorers were or who got penalised and what for, um, for any given moment. All right, so let's go through and see our main production room. So how is the audio fed back into your main production? Uh, so we have a snake, uh, a, a stage box that takes the inputs from the commentary box. The snake goes through the wall and into our Behringer UMC 1820 HD. All right, so in here we have vMix where it all happens. Uh, so we uh, very heavily utilize uh, the instant replay uh, element of this, uh, which is pretty crucial when you're doing multi-camera sport. We utilize uh, the multiple MEs uh, or mix inputs uh, as well so that we can, during intermissions, uh, send a replay feed out to the commentators if they want to review a specific moment uh, to see what happened better without having to cut that through to the uh, the live output going to the viewers. Uh, we have our own in-house graphic system that uh, that we utilize that is driven by Casper CG. And then we use central control to take all of our uh, command inputs and assign it to whatever program we need it to. In terms of control surfaces, we are using the Behringer Universal Control Service surface to control our audio levels uh, as well as our replay. So queuing and playback, but also uh, using the jog shuttle wheel to uh, scrub through the footage and mark manual uh, in and out points for any uh, elements we might have missed with the uh, the, the Q button. Uh, we're using an X Keys XK60 uh, as our control surface to cut between cameras, uh, to run scripts, to show replays, uh, and essentially do whatever we need to do. Um, one of the most important buttons here is the little green button, which is uh, push to talk to the commentators so we can speak in their ears and, and uh, let them know what's going on if, if uh, they're not accurately talking about what's, what's happening or they might have missed something behind the play. And then we're using a Stream Deck to control our graphics interface. Uh, so we can start and stop our clock, add and subtract uh, seconds and minutes, mark replays and move them across to our Playout tab uh, as we see fit. And that's using central control? And that's using central control. Uh, so I don't know how much you can see here, but um, we're, we're using Central Control 2 uh, in this studio at the moment because we bought Central Control as soon as it came out. So our license hasn't been upgraded to version 3 yet. Joe, he wants a free one. <laughs> Um, and then for our comms, back to our camera operators, we're using Mumble, uh, which uh, allows our camera ops to just have an app on their mobile, connect to a hotspot in the remote location and speak directly with our production office. And so this is mainly for your remote? In this, is, this is for our remote productions, yes. So how do you receive the SRT feeds? Uh, so we receive the SRT feeds directly into vMix. Uh, yep. So we have looked at... Uh, deploying uh, Magewell uh, decoders, uh, but uh, at this point in time, the uh, the budgets that we're, we're working with don't really allow for that. So anything you want to tell us a little bit about the, um, just what it's like to do remote sports production? Remote is, yeah, remote always is one that gets the adrenaline going, especially if, uh, if something goes awry when you're close to game time or even during the game. Uh, it's definitely not for the faint hearted. Uh, and obviously you want to have as many backups uh, solutions as your budget allows. Awesome. All right, cool. So that's remote and you're going to do one right now, right? That's um, correct. Yeah, we've got yeah. a game happening this afternoon. Very cool. All right, Flash. Playback. First goal didn't take long to make an impact on the power play. Good pass there from Lemon. Uh, time and place. Lemony really in front of him contested that pass. Power play's over. And here's Lemon with the pass to Papalato. And Papalato's nailed it. All right, flash. He needs to get rid of the face off. Out in front, but he wasn't needed. Two nil Bears with a rifle media power play goal. Oh, right. Two nil Bears. I'm back now here on the freezing Gold Coast at vMix HQ and I just want to say thanks to Michael for letting me check out his studio. It was very cool to see a full-on vMix studio setup with multiple cameras, instant replay, multiple controllers, scripting, audio and graphics that was all being produced 
away from where the content was. So it was just like doing a full on vMix production, but you were using SRT video instead of using a capture card. And this is a really cool way to do things if you don't really have the opportunity to set up multiple studios. You could set up a single point of contact with an awesome vMix setup, and then just have everything coming in remotely. And it was cool to check out his camera kits with the encoders, where you can just send those out, have it all pre-configured, set up, and someone can just send back an SRT feed to you. And I think those major ones also allow you to do things remotely as well if you need to make any changes on the encoder box. So the SRT quality settings were set to HEVC and typically the latency was adjusted and bitrate was adjusted depending on the location and what kind of internet they had there as well. So if you have a cool example of how you're using vMix uh, and I've still got some travel credits left, feel free to drop me an email and I might be able to swing by to check it out. All right, so I'm gonna leave you with some more sights and sounds of Newcastle. Thanks for watching and I will stream you later.